Hi, I'm John Hornick. Welcome to Lesson 81 of Chef's Apprentice, Learning to Cook Like a Pro, One Small Plate at a Time. This lesson is Chestnut and Pear Ravioli with Bourbon Butter. This is a better ravioli than you'll find in most restaurants. The chestnut and pear are a wonderful combination. Although they're slightly sweet, the sweetness is balanced by the pasta, butter sauce and cheese, and the sage and prosciutto garnish. Here you will learn to make a chiffonade, which is a fancy word for very thin strips of leafy herbs, such as sage or basil, usually used as a garnish. To make the strips, stack the leaves neatly, roll them up tightly like a cigar, then thinly slice across the roll. You'll also make a, ba a basic butter sauce called Guerre Nozette. This is nothing more than butter cooked until it just starts to brown and smells of hazelnuts. The challenge of this dish is to make perfect raviolis, cook them al dente, and make the Guerre Nozette without burning the butter. Techniques today are peeling, coring, and chopping, making pasta, scoring and roasting chestnuts, seasoning, sweating, deglazing, and reducing, pureeing, making ravioli, making a chiffonade, making a butter sauce, keeping warm, plating, and garnishing. So let's start cooking. Okay, let's talk about the ingredients we'll need for lesson 81, which is the chestnut and pear ravioli with bourbon butter. Uh, we're gonna need one batch of freshly made pasta. Now I made this pasta this morning. This is from the um, master uh, pasta recipe lesson 55. And uh, of course you'll need the ingredients to make that. One cup of flour, one egg, a tablespoon of um, olive oil and a pinch of salt and some water. Uh, in addition to having the pasta, we'll need to have about a quarter of a cup of chopped shallots, about four uh, large um, cloves of garlic chopped. And I say about because if you don't have large cloves, you use you know a couple of small cloves instead of one large clove. So about four large cloves of garlic chopped. We need to have one pound of chestnuts that have been roasted, peeled, and coarsely chopped. And I have a separate bonus lesson on roasting chestnuts. We also need to have some olive oil. And then we'll need to have one uh, ripe, juicy pear, one large pear. Uh, this is a Dianjou pear, and um, uh, when you chop that, you want to peel it, and then you want to seed it, and then chop it. And uh, when you chop it, if you, if you leave any juice on the board, if it's a juicy pear, get that juice into the bowl too, okay? So one large uh, juicy pear. Uh, about one cup of uh, chicken stock. Remember, we make our own chicken stock here. I just thought this today. Uh, there's a bonus lesson on making duck stock. You just use chicken bones instead of duck bones. You can also go to my website, which is chefsapprentice.com, and there's a stock, stock chart there. It shows you the ingredients for making really any type of stock. We need to have about one half a cup of uh, white wine. I'm using these little uh, wine bottles. This is Sutter Home. Uh, I think there's about a half cup in here, just eyeballing it. We need to have uh, about six large sage leaves. Now, uh, I say again, about, because sage leaves are all different sizes. So uh, you want to get about the equivalent of six large sage leaves. You might have more leaves than that if they're small. We need to have uh, eight ounces of unsalted butter. I'm only making for uh, a smaller number of people today, so I, I'm using half that much butter, but if you, I'm giving the ingredients to make the amount in the description, so that's eight ounces of um, unsalted butter. We need about a quarter of a cup of um, bourbon. It does not have to be expensive bourbon. We are not gonna eyeball that. I'm gonna pour it out into a measuring cup later for safety reasons. We need to have some uh, cornmeal for making the uh, ravioli. Uh, then we'll need to have two slices of uh, prosciutto that have been chopped. Now, if you remember from, I think, the very first lesson, the best way to chop prosciutto is to take the cold slices and your chef's knife and then chop like this on the board, okay? I'm not going to do it real loud because I'm afraid the sound may shut the camera off. But uh, if you do it fast, they're all going to jump around a lot, okay? I often do it fast. They jump around and then I get them all back together again. But if you do this slower, they will stay in their area better. They won't be flying all over the place as much. They will still fly all over the place. But anyway, chopping like this, okay? That's the way to chop prosciutto. And then we'll need to have some shaved Parmesan cheese, or you can buy a hunk of Parmesan cheese and shave it yourself. You can also use um, grated Parmesan cheese if you like. And then we'll need to have some kosher salt, 
and a pepper mill for freshly ground black pepper. And um, I believe that's all of the ingredients. Well, right now, I'll come back and I'll show you the equipment for Lesson 81. Okay, let's talk about the equipment for Lesson 81. We're going to need a cutting board and chef's knife. We're going to need the equipment to make the master pasta recipe, which is basically a pasta machine and either a knife or a pastry knife and a fork, okay? Uh, then we'll need to have also the equipment to roast the chestnuts, and that's basically a sheet pan, a paring knife, and then you'll roast them in the oven. We need to have a peeler and a, uh, a saucepan uh, to make the filling and a wooden spoon. Then we're going to need something to puree it. I'm going to use the um, food processor today. Sometimes it works better with a blender, sometimes with a food processor. We're going to use the food processor today. Then we'll need to have a, uh, a strainer and a rubber spatula and wooden spoon so we can strain that filling into a bowl. And remember, sometimes it works better with a rubber spatula, sometimes it works better with a wooden spoon. Then we'll need a pasta cutter. And for all of the ravioli we've made so far in this course, I've used a round pasta cutter. This Today we're going to use a square pasta cutter. And then uh, we'll need to have a, a sheet pan to receive the raviolis after we make them. And we'll need to have a spoon to help us make the raviolis, along with a brush. And uh, then we're going to need to have a pan to cook the raviolis. Now, you can use a deep pasta pot, but as I've explained in earlier ravioli lessons, I prefer to use a wide, shallower pan because it's gentler on the raviolis. You can watch them better. You can get them out easier, okay? And uh, then we'll also need to have a uh, saucepan to uh, melt the butter and make the bourbon butter. And um, then we'll need to have an ice bowl because we want to stop that butter from cooking uh, and, and, and we want to prevent it from burning. So we're going to have a bowl of ice and when that butter gets to the right point, we're going to just put that, uh, pan, that saucepan down into the ice and stop the cooking. And uh, then we're going to need to have a uh, slotted spoon to get the uh, uh, raviolis out of the pan that we're cooking them in. But uh, a little trick that I use often when I have a bunch of them is I use a small strainer. And I, I use the strainer to get them out instead of using um, a slotted spoon. You get them out faster that way. And since you're only cooking the, these ravioli, raviolis for one to two minutes, uh, you want to get them all out pretty rapidly uh, when they're uh, after they've been in there for the right amount of time. Okay, that is all the equipment we need. We'll break, come back, and start cooking. Okay, first thing we're going to do is sweat the shallots, okay? We've done that many times before. Medium heat, sweat them till they're translucent. Okay, next thing on our prep list is to add the garlic and to sweat that. And you know what we do with that. We stir it for about 30 seconds so it doesn't burn. Okay, next we're going to deglaze with the white wine and reduce it till it is just wet, almost dry. Okay, our shallots uh, and garlic are almost dry, so we're going to add the chestnuts and we're going to add the pear. Your pear might start to turn a little bit brown, don't worry about that because uh, when it's mixed up and cooked with the chestnuts, it's, it's going to have a color that's kind of like a grayish brown. Uh, cooked chestnut puree is not the prettiest thing, but it's very tasty. Okay, then we're going to add the chicken stock. And uh, we have about a, a cup here. We want to have enough just to cover, just to cover. Now, uh, and it does, it just covers the, um, uh, the mixture here. Now, uh, if that starts to boil out as we're cooking, uh, you can add a little water. But you want to keep the, um, the liquid a little bit below the surface of the pear and the chestnuts because um, uh, we don't want it to be too soupy after we make the puree, okay? Uh, if we were making a soup, we would cover it, uh, uh, cover the vegetables with um, the stock so that we'd have more of a soup consistency, but we don't want it to be that thin. Now we're also going to add some salt uh, lightly. We can always add more later. And some freshly ground black pepper. 
and we want to stir that up and then we want to let this cook until those uh, chestnuts are fall apart soft. Okay, here are our cooked uh, nuts and pear, and as you can see, there's no liquid above the surface, okay? If you, if you um, put the pan to the side, you can see a little liquid around the edges there. But what we're going for is a thick paste, okay? Not something soupy. So you want to make sure you cook out. You want you don't want to let the uh, all the liquid cook out because uh, the nuts and the pear will burn. But you also uh, want to at at the end once they're cooked. And this took about uh, 15 minutes. Once they're cooked till the um, nuts are um, fall apart soft, uh, you want there to be just enough water in there that when you puree it, you're going to have a thick paste. Okay, now let's puree this in the food processor. All right, let's see what it looks like. It looks nice and smooth. Yeah, there's a little bit of lumpiness in there, but we'll get that out when we strain it. Okay, now I've put the uh, mixture into the strainer, and now we're going to push it through this strainer with the rubber spatula. Remember, sometimes wooden spoon works better. Then we're gonna wash off the uh, spatula and get the bottom of the strainer. All right, now is the time to adjust the seasoning. Let's taste it. Hmm. Uh, I don't think it needs anything, so we're just gonna leave it the way it is. But if you think it needs more salt or pepper at this point, add it, stir it up. Now, next thing we're gonna do is cover this and let it chill in the fridge until it is cold and so it firms up, okay? We want it to be a thick paste. While the filling is chilling, you can make the butter sauce. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, melt the butter, and then we're gonna take it past the uh, melted stage to the clarified stage. There's a, there's a separate bonus lesson on clarifying butter. And then just past clarified, we're gonna get to Buer Nozette, where you start to smell of hazelnuts. And uh, we have our ice, standing by so that we can put our saucepan into it and stop the cooking. Okay, now we still have a little bit of foam on the top. You can see just a little bit of browning happening in the butter. We're gonna, and I can smell the hazelnuts. So we're gonna put that down onto the um, ice and turn off the heat, okay? And that foam will go away. You can smell that. Smell that hazelnut smell, okay? We're swirling it around a bit so that the butter uh, mixes around in the pan and gets cooled by the, um, the ice underneath the pan. All right, now I've poured the butter uh, into a clean saucepan. What you could do is pour the butter into another container, clean out your saucepan, dry it, put the butter back into the saucepan that you used to, um, to clarify it and to make the bore nozette. Uh, but I put it into a separate pan. Uh, now what we're gonna do is, um, this butter is cool now, and by the way, that whole process of going to Buer that that took about mm, seven minutes on medium heat, and you gotta watch it constantly, okay? You don't wanna burn it. All right, now what we wanna do is add the bourbon, and uh, remember, we have about a quarter of a cup of bourbon, and there's two ways we can do this. One is we can flame it. If you do that, be very careful, stand back. Uh, or you can just uh, let it cook, bring it to a boil, uh, and then just as it comes to a boil, take it down to a simmer and uh, let it simmer for about five minutes. You don't want to reduce it very much, uh, you just want to get rid of the alcohol, but I'm going to flame it. Reducing the heat a little bit because uh, the flaming is making the butter a lot hotter. Okay, I'm reducing it to low. I'm going to let that flame burn off. And then I'm just going to let it simmer on low heat for a couple minutes. I'm not. You don't have to go very long if you've burned off the alcohol. Just let it let it simmer for a minute or two on low heat. Okay, now we've let our um, bourbon butter sauce uh, simmer on very low heat for. 
uh, about two minutes. And it's got a little bit of a cloudiness to it, that's normal. And now what we want to do is keep this warm until we're ready to plate up. Now, if you made this earlier and you're making the ravioli later, uh, then you can put this in the fridge if you want and then just warm it uh, when we're ready, to, just before you're ready to plate. All right, now we're gonna make our ravioli. First, I took the pasta that we made earlier and I dusted it with flour. Then we're gonna press it out a little bit so it's not quite as thick. And step one is to roll it through the machine until it's a thickness that you like. I'm probably going to go to um, number six. This one goes up to nine, okay? Yours might not go up that high. So you're gonna to have to go to a, a thickness that you are comfortable with that you think is going to um, be uh, a good um, solid ravioli without it without it tearing. Okay. Okay, next step is we're going to take our filling, which is chilled, and we're going to put little mounds of it onto the, um, the pasta. And we want to make sure that the mounds will fit easily inside of the cutter, okay? You don't want them to be too big or you won't be able to cut them. So that's going to depend upon the size of your cutter. Next, we want a brush. Not too much liquid, just dampen it. You don't want to soak it. Right now, we want to lay one sheet carefully on top of the other sheet. Now we want to cut. Now we have our sheet pan uh, scattered with cornmeal and we want to just pick up those raviolis and put them onto the sheet pan. Now I showed you in a prior lesson that you can now re-roll this pasta and make some more raviolis. Uh, and I have here enough filling to do some more, uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep ro rolling this pasta out until I either run out of filling or I run out of pasta. But I'm not going to show that to you on camera. That You can see that in a prior lesson. But it's basically just the same thing that we did. In fact, it's exactly the same thing that we did already. So um, uh, I will leave you to decide whether you're going to do that. It depends on how many you're serving. We want to serve uh, two or three of these per guest as a small plate. So depending on how many you're serving, you need to figure out that you have, you need to make sure you have enough. Okay, here we are. I ran out of uh, uh, filling just before I ran out of, um, uh, out of, out of uh, pasta. I got 19 raviolis out of that uh, batch. 
and I believe the description is for six people, six to eight people uh, at two to three per person. So that would give you enough. And um, I should say that uh, when you cut with the square ravioli, I don't think you get quite as much out of the pasta. I'm, I'm sorry, when you cut with the square cutter, you don't get quite as much out of the pasta. Uh, we've been using the round cutter in prior lessons. I think you probably get a couple more raviolis that way. But I like the way that the, um, the square ones look. Okay, now, um, if you're going to be cooking these soon, you can just leave them out at room temperature. Uh, if it's going to be more than an hour or so, I suggest you cover them and put them in the fridge. All right, now let's chiffonade the sage. Now, we just happen to have sage leaves that go from being large down to being smaller in kind of increments, but that's rarely the case. Uh, but if you can, put the largest one on the bottom and then the next largest one on top of that and the next largest one on top of that, etc., until they're all stacked like this. And then roll them up tightly like it would be like a cigar. And then, after you get a nice tight roll, Take your chef's knife and make very thin strips. These are like a sixteenth of an inch wide, okay? And do this along the whole roll. And what you end up with is these strips of sage you can also do it with basil, although actually I don't recommend this with basil because basil will start to turn black after it's sliced. It's better to tear basil. It doesn't get black, it doesn't turn black as much. Okay, it's time to bring our water to a boil so that we can cook the ravioli. Okay, now we're gonna slip the raviolis into the water. I'm only gonna do a few for purposes of the video. And we're gonna let these uh, cook for one to two minutes. Okay, it's been just about a minute and a half, and uh, the raviolis are floating, which usually means that they're done. We're going to take them out of the water with a strainer and plate them immediately. Now, we are doing this as a small plate, so you can plate either two or three per bowl, uh, depending on how, much, how many other things you're serving with it. Then we want to uh, drizzle with a little bit of the bourbon butter. And then garnish with some sage. Garnish with some prosciutto. Some shaved Parmesan. Just a couple of grains of salt and a twist of pepper. Okay, there we have it. That's lesson 81, chestnut and pear ravioli with bourbon butter. You can see photos of the final dish on my Instagram, which is at Chef's Apprentice, cook like a pro. Next up is chicken roulade with apricots, mushrooms, and chef. One of my favorite dishes, actually. Please remember to subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.